baby. <sighs> oh, yes. There, oh. there. Oh, no, there. Oh. <sighs> Hello, everybody, and today's a special anniversary. That's right, if you actually checked what the title was before you clicked on this, today is the 30th anniversary of the Leisure Suit Larry series. Oh, my dear God. 30 years. I can't believe it. Allo shipped out Leisure Suit Larry 1 on this date in 1987. Uh, if you've never <laughs> excuse me, played the Leisure Suit Larry games before, you play Larry Laffer, kind of the 40-year-old virgin, and he attempts to convince a variety of uh, women of different types to sleep with him. And a common link between all the games are Larry's explorations of luxurious and cosmopolitan hotels, ships, beaches, resorts, and casinos. Um, and if you play the later games, uh, Larry Laffer is voiced by uh, Jan Rabson, who I love the voice for him. It was perfectly done. I really, really like his voice. They brought him back for Reloaded. I was very happy about that. But um, there are quite a few games in this series. Uh, you have Leisure Suit Larry 1, and it has two remakes. Okay, then you have Leisure Suit Larry Goes Looking for Love in Several Wrong Places, which is Leisure Suit Larry 2 in 1988. They had one, that's crazy, they came out like basically in 87, 88, and 89, the first three did. Uh, Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passionate Patty in Pursuit of Pulsating Pectorals came out in 1989. Then there is no Leisure Suit Larry 4, which I'll do a video on later. Um, then in 1991, Passionate Patty does a little undercover work. Shape Up or Slip Out came out in 93, the CD version in 94, which is an excellent version. And then really probably one of the best games in the series, Leisure Suit Larry Love for Sale. Uh, it came out in 1996. I wanted that game so bad as a kid. Obviously my parents uh, did not allow that. Um, but if you didn't know, since this is about the original game, uh, the series basically started with the soft porn adventure text adventure game created by Chuck Benton and they basically took the structure of that game for the first Leisure Suit Larry game and the Larry games ended up becoming one of Sierra's most popular series and um, the only really games produced by Sierra at that time that had like significant significant sexual themes but um I really enjoyed the series a whole lot uh, we've only got one more to play seven is coming <laughs> phrasing but um i'm gonna kind of go through here a little bit on the original game so leisure suit larry in the land of the lounge lizards is a graphic adventure game originally released in 1987 as the first part of what we would soon call the leisure suit larry series this was originally developed for the dos systems and the apple II. i would love an apple II disc version of this so bad uh, it was later ported to the other platforms like the amiga the atari st the Apple Macintosh, I had a Tandy computer they discussed here, like a Tandy 1000. And it used the, oddly enough, since it came out in 87, I'm, I'm not sure, I guess it just must have been easier for them. Uh, they chose to put it on the AGI engine, which was the original engine from the early 80s, like from the original King's Quest, Quest for the Crown game. Um, so as I said earlier, the game follows Larry Laffer as he desperately tries to get lucky in the fictional American city of Lost Wages. Uh, the game establishes several elements which reoccur in the later Larry games, including his <laughs> leisure suit, his perpetual bad luck, and his penchant for double entendres. Ooh, we love those. The story and basic structure of the game are lifted, as I said earlier, from Soft Porn Adventure, the 1981 Apple II text adventure. Um, this game had very little advertising and was a commercial and critical success. Um, Sierra developed and published a remake uh, in the early 90s, 1991, that used the SCI engine with 256 colors and point and click, which um, did very well. Um, and I really enjoyed the Leisure Suit Larry Reloaded that came out in 2013. I really would like to see them continue on making these. I hope something happens and they do. So the plot of the game. Larry Laffer is a 38-year-old which they changed to the 40-year-old in the remake, Loser, who lives in his mother's basement and has not yet lost his virginity. Having grown weary of his lonely existence, he decides to visit the resort city of Lost Wages, a parody of Las Vegas, hoping to experience what he has not lived before and to finally find the woman of his dreams, 
Larry starts out with nothing but an out of style 1970s disco era leisure suit and $94 in his pocket. His quest involves full possible women, a nameless seedy looking sex worker, Fawn, a club goer of low moral fiber, Faith, a receptionist who, true to her name, is faithful to her boyfriend, and Eve, a bathing beauty and Larry's ultimate goal. So basically, your job in this game is to score. And it's really, really neat. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the development of the game here. Um, Al Lowe, a formal high school, <clears throat> which I love, he was a high school teacher. Al Lowe, I don't know if you'll listen to this. If you do, I'll, I'll be really happy, but I'm a high school teacher. And I really, really love the fact that you are a saxophone player and everything else. I love, I just, I really have a lot of respect for you, Mr. Lowe. But Al Lowe, a former high school teacher, had carved a niche for himself at Sierra with his work on such Disney-licensed edutainment titles as Donald Duck's Playground, Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Wood, and The Black Cauldron, which I have played on this channel. I might look at the other ones. Um, he wrote, designed, and programmed those games, which I'm very impressed, Mr. Lowe. They were very good. Uh, at least the Black Cauldron with all the random uh, bits to it and the early non-typing. It didn't use a text parser. It used the F keys to do stuff. It was really interesting. In 1982, Sierra had released a text-only game on the Apple II that we've already discussed, the soft porn adventure. And in 1986, after Sierra lost the Disney license, Al Lowe suggested that Sierra remake soft porn adventure with the improved tools now at their disposal, and Ken Williams agreed. Lowe, who considered the original soft porn adventure a primitive effort, borrowed its basic structure and added a graphic game engine, which was the AGI, improved humor, humor and an on-screen protagonist, which becomes Larry Laffer. Chuck Bitten, creator of soft porn adventures, included in Leisure Suit Larry in credits as the layout and puzzles of the game are identical to those found in the earlier title. However, Lowe said that in soft porn adventure, there were no characters in the game, which is true, there's not, they don't really mention anything about them. There was no central character at all, there were almost no char characteristics to the women, and so it was a real rollover. I think there's one line of dialogue that I kept of the original game, and all the rest was fresh. But that's true, I've played both. Uh, I would agree, he's not lying. The game was co-designed and illustrated by Mark Crow, creator of the Space Quest series, and co-programmed by Ken Williams. An accomplished jazz musician, the Lounge Lizards being a jazz band's name, Lowe also wrote the main theme music called For Your Thighs Only. I never knew that, just learned that. And some of his compositions appear in later entries of the series. The theme, inspired by Iver <clears throat> Irving Berlin's 1929 song, Alexander's Ragtime Band, was composed within 20 minutes. Lowe said that it sounded so unusual, so different, so fresh compared to most computer game music, that I decided to write something with the same pep, simplicity, humor, and out-of-sync attitude. <clears throat> I like how in the release of it, they basically, they weren't sure how this game was going to be received, so they kind of just were like, mm, here you go. And some of the stores would not stock this game because of its adult content, which led to controversy. In effect, you know, in effect, the first month's sales were lower than any new Sierra product launched in years. Due to the adult nature of the game, the game included an age verification system consisting of trivia questions that Al Lowe assumed children would not know the answer to. As many of the questions are US-centric, they risk frustrating non-American players. If played today, the questions are also out of date cultural references. One begins, OJ Simpson is, and one wrong answer is, under indictment. <laughs> That's craziness. In the original AGI version, the age verification screen may be skipped by pressing Alt X, or in the 91 version, you can press Control Alt X. So, pretty neat. Uh, we're going to look at the reception of the game before we move on and I give my final thoughts on the game. Uh, Larry's sales were very poor at first, with only 4,000 copies sold upon its release. Wow. Some resellers refused to handle the game, while others refused to advertise it, and one refused to list the game on its list of bestsellers. A Sarah employee quit, and a potential employee refused to work on Larry. Lowe stated, My initial reaction was that I had wasted six months of my life. Word of mouth spread quickly. However, by the year's end, the game became a commercial success, selling over 250,000 copies. Now, folks, that doesn't sound like a lot today, but in the computer world, that is huge. That is huge numbers. According to Sierra's marketing director, John Williams, oh, I wonder if he uh, composes on the side, obviously lots of retailers were selling lots of Leisure Suit Larry, but no one wanted to admit it. It also became widely pirated, including in the Soviet Union. According to Lowe, a film adaptation was considered and he was flown to Hollywood to demonstrate the game in person. 
Footage from the game was used in the 1990 music video for Sailor's song, The Secretary. Sierra received what Williams described as a deluge of mail opposing its release of Larry after he wrote a series of articles for Computer Gaming World discussing his company and the industry's view on adult software. The game's success resulting in a long line of sequels and spinoffs and some pretty awful garbage. Um, the Computer Gaming World's reviewer Roy w uh, Wagner, about said Wagner since I'm thinking music, a uh, wholesome family man, as he was called, stated that Larry is a lot of fun to play and is very humorous, with good graphics, good design, and good fun, provided who needs good taste. Wow. According to the review by Rob Steele of The Games Machine, the Atari ST version was entering and was entertaining, excuse me, and very enjoyable, even if wholeheartedly sexist. Uh, Jason Simmons from Amiga, Amiga Action opinioned that the 1991 remake's advanced graphics and new control system improved the game by a huge degree, but without a hard drive, it is slow and almost a chore to play. Well, you know, back in the day, I guess. You have to understand in 91, I think my computer at the time in 91 still required floppies uh, to play the games. You had to keep changing the games out with it, so I can understand that. Uh, it's a waste of time and a little more an exercise in pretty pictures if you've played the original, it said. So... <clears throat> In 1988, Lucia Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards was given an award for the Best Adventure or Fantasy Role-Playing Program of 1987 by the Software Publishers Association. Um, in, this is funny. In 1996, Computer Gaming World ranked it as the 69th best game of all time. Yeah. Also ranking it as the 5th most funny computer game and stated, Base, sexist, sometimes <laughs> scarological humor, with no concessions made to taste or sensibilities, this was the best of a funny series. Uh, it was fun. Uh, it was included on its 2011 list of 6 games that shamelessly used sex to sell, but added that it was actually funny, well crafted, and well written, and has become a cult classic among gaming fans. In 2012, Time Magazine named as one of the 100 greatest video games of all time, commenting a humor-filled adventure game that wasn't bashful about showing some skin. The world hadn't seen anything like it. So, that's really cool. Now, my review of the game is that it's a 9 out of 10. Um, you know, a great game. The humor's hilarious. The game's fun, even with the graphics the way they are now. It doesn't really matter. If you have an imagination, you can make it work. So... Pick the game up. Uh, you can get it on Amazon for about $25 right now. Um, you know, if you want the box game, but you can find it all over the place. Uh, goodoldgames.com has the whole series. Very great price. Pick these games up. Play them. Uh, I will say that on my channel, they're probably some of the best viewed things I've ever done. And Leisure Suit Larry 7 is going to be coming within the next couple weeks, and I'm pretty excited about that. So, once again, happy anniversary to Leisure Suit Larry. And Aulo, thank you so much for making a game series that is just pure fun. Uh, stay tuned, guys, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, check out some of my Talking Sierra episodes. We have four episodes out right now, and the latest one was about female protagonists in adventure games. So check it out, and once again, thanks for watching. Bye.